Welcome. In this video, we will have a closer look at the labor management capabilities of SAP S4 HANA Extended Warehouse Management, and see how it can help us in the planning, execution and evaluation of our warehouse operations. This video presents a high-level and generic overview of a specific SAP product or functionality. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer, or any other group or individual. The goal of this video is to provide information that will make you better equipped to make your own choices. Before we kick off, let's have a look at some of the benefits usage of EWM labor management brings to the table. Labor management enables you to optimize labor efficiency and allocate resources in accordance with the workload. It will enable alerts when performance falls below expectations. Finally, labor management allows you to simulate impacts to labor as a result of changes to the process flow or inventory. Before we get started, let's do a quick overview of EWM labor management. Labor management can be divided in three, pre-processing, planned workload and executed workload. In pre-processing we can get an overview of the upcoming workload before the actual warehouse tasks are created. The result is only used for planning purposes and allows resource planning for a particular activity or activity area. In planned workload, the warehouse tasks are created, which means the destination or source bins have been determined and detailed information about the workload is available. The plan duration of each task is calculated using engineered labor standards. Since the executed workload documents contain all relevant data after activity completion, such as name of processor, start time, and end time, we can in executed workload facilitate the comparison of actual and planned execution time. Labor management is activated in the system per warehouse and per activity. Indirect labor tasks can also be recorded on the RF devices. Such activities include for instance battery changes, breaks, cleaning, fire drills and meetings. For our short demo, we have prepared a scenario with only six sales orders. Each order having three line items. For simplicity, all orders are identical. The three products on each order is to be picked across three different activity areas in the warehouse. We will be utilizing a number of Fury apps to accomplish our tasks. We have grouped them in two. On the top, apps that are independent of labor management, in the second row, the apps that are directly related to labor management. Sales order creation and subsequent delivery creation are activities that normally takes place independent of labor management. We will kick off by creating the delivery documents for the six sales orders mentioned earlier. This will make them available for processing in EWM. The labor management app, or technically speaking, the labor management overview page, provides an overview of the upcoming workload even before the warehouse tasks have been created. After delivery creation an overview of delivery items per activity area becomes visible in the leftmost tile. In the plan workload app, a rough plan duration of each warehouse task can be calculated. Since the warehouse wave has not been released and warehouse tasks have yet to be created, the system will not know the exact pick bin location for each item. Therefore the estimation is based on a rough cut calculation. We will now use the warehouse monitor and release the wave manually. At the same time we will see that labor management has its own node in the warehouse monitor. When the wave is released, warehouse tasks are being created, and the real pick bins are determined. This enables a more detailed calculation. We open the warehouse monitor and uses the delivery numbers to find the corresponding outbound delivery orders in EWM. From there we can find the waves and release them. Please bear in mind that waves are normally released automatically, with no manual effort needed. When the waves are released, we can have a look at the warehouse orders. From there we can drill down to warehouse tasks. We can see that tasks have been assigned to different queues and that an expected duration is available for each task. As already mentioned, 
labor management has its own node in the warehouse monitor. Let's have a look from that angle. Details about the planned workload is available in full. It is now time for us to revisit the labor management overview page and see if more information has become available now that the waves have been released and tasks have been created. And rightfully, after the creation of warehouse orders and tasks, more details about the planned workload has become available. We can drill down for more details. So, with all that planning, it's time to get some work done, some actual picking of goods. In this case, the actual work will take place on RF devices in the warehouse, across a number of warehouse workers. The work can be closely monitored in the warehouse monitor. In the warehouse monitor we can see that every warehouse task keeps a record of who did it, and the time of execution. After execution a comparison between planned and actuals become available. In the overview page, we can make the comparison between planned and actual across a number of different dimensions. The functionality shown in this video is available in S4 HANA Extended Warehouse Management, embedded and decentralized. It is also available in Classic SAP Extended Warehouse Management 9.x. Before we end, let's recap the benefits of labor management. Labor management enables you to optimize labor efficiency and allocate resources in accordance with the workload. It will enable alerts when performance falls below expectations. Finally, Labor management allows you to simulate impacts to labor as a result of changes to the process flow or inventory. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.